Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Potassium Industries. We have started discussing about uh, fertilizer industries, especially after uh, having the knowledge of how much importance is uh, chemical engineer is having in fertilizer industry. We started with discussing about fertilizers, their sources, different types of fertilizers, etc. Those things we started and then we started with nitrogen fertilizers or nitrogen fertilizer industries. Then we discussed about the phosphorus fertilizer industries also. Now we start about the potassium industries. So what are the sources of potassium? As, as we have already seen at the beginning of the uh, fertilizers uh, lecture, uh, we do not have uh, indigenous sources uh, for the potassium and phosphorus. So obviously we have to find out from where we can get etc. So the ancient sources of potassium was ashes of wood and then plant waste burnings, whatever the agricultural field waste after collecting the crops etc. Then whatever the agricultural wastage is there that is usually burnt and then after burn whatever the ashes are there, they are one source of uh, potassium in general. Uh, and then also forestry waste also sometimes you know when you burn the forestry waste then also you may get uh, ashes and then that ash may have uh, uh, adequate amount of potassium in general that is what happens. Okay. Now how it is available in the nature? It is available in the nature in two different forms as insoluble form as highly soluble form. Right? For example, as insoluble potash bearing silicates it is available in nature as well as as highly soluble salts like potassium chloride in underground deposits and, and in sea water also available this potassium. So uh, the minerals of potassium if you would like to see, primary potash minerals include sylvinite which is a mixture of sylvite, sylvite is nothing but potassium chloride and halite which is nothing but sodium chloride in different proportions, in different proportions of KCl and NaCl is nothing but the sylvinate. It is one of the primary potash minerals. Okay. Carnalite that is KCl MgCl2 6H2O, then kyanite that is KCl MgSO4 3H2O, langbinite that is K2SO4 2 MgSO4 and then nitrate that is potassium nitrate. In these different forms this uh, the potash minerals are available in general. Okay? We have already discussed in our previous class that India do not have any exploitable deposits of potassium. There may be some sources of potassium but they are not sufficient enough that you can do the exploitation of uh, uh, you know those deposits to get potassium. So then uh, what are the possible sources of potassium in India? So as we have already seen Bitten's leftover salt recovery. In the salt recovery or uh, salt making process, whatever the remaining highly concentrated solution is remaining, highly viscous concentrated solution is remaining, that is no, nothing but the bitten, that is known as the bitten. It is a very good source of uh, uh, not only potassium but also several other minerals, okay? that is one source. And then, as we are uh, saying, that you know, uh, ashes of woods may be a source of. Uh, uh, potassium uh, as per the ancient sources. So then that means that they must be available in some plants etc. like that also. So uh, uh, whatever the fermentation uh, after fermentation uh, molasses, distillery slopes etc. are there. So they must also be having some amount of potassium. So what we can say these are two possible sources for potassium. Okay? Potassium if you uh, see some more details about the potassium. Then raw materials, first is the sylvinite that is coming in uh, sedimentary deposits. Sedimentary deposits of sylvinite is one resource. Langbinite is another raw material and then deposits of solid sodium salts permeated by a saturated complex brain. So actually these uh, different raw materials, actually there are many sources, uh, you know, we are listing as per the requirements in general, as per the product that is we are getting from these uh, raw materials, you know, we have just put them as a different category, that is it. Let us say sylvinite is a mixture of sylvite and halite as we know and it is processed to get high grade potassium chloride. If you wanted to get high grade potassium chloride, it is better to mine and treat the sylvinite to get high grade potassium chloride. Let us say if you wanted to get uh, potassium sulphate, then langbinite is a good source. It is processed to make potassium sulphate. 
Similarly, deposits of solid sodium salts may be processed to separate high grade potassium chloride and borax together with numerous other saline products also. Okay? So, some of these things we are going to see anyway, what are the products. If you take the statistics until 1980, whatever the potash that is available or potassium salts production was there. So, out of those potassium salt KCl was occupying 79 percent and then remaining 9 percent is K2SO4. Okay? Now, we see worldwide major producers of a, a potassium. Right? Potassium uh, especially towards the fertilizer industries what it is, how much K2O, how much uh, dissolved or soluble K2O that is present in fertilizer that is taken as a kind of a reference for the potassium that is present in fertilizers. So, in terms of uh, millions of metric tons of K2O produced if you see uh, United uh, States of Soviet Russia and Canada were almost you know close to each other. right? Then East Germany 3.2 and West Germany 2.3, USA 2.2, France 1.8 are the uh, leading countries producing these many millions of metric tons of K2O. Right? Now, how do you get the metallic uh, potassium that is the question because the uh, potassium that you are getting from the uh, saline or brine solution etc that they are mostly potash or other minerals. Right? When you take the brine solution and then do the processing you get the different types of uh, potassium salts in general KCl, K2SO4 etc these kind of things you can get and then those things we are going to see anyway. But if you wanted to have a metallic uh, uh, potassium K, so then what are the methods that are available that we see. So, usually electrolysis of uh, fused KCl method is uh, followed to get the uh, potassium, metallic potassium which is similar to sodium but more reactive compared to the sodium. Okay? However, it is not uh, followed or uh, this method is not followed commercially to produce metallic uh, uh, you know uh, metallic potassium because whatever the K that is produced that attacks the electrodes and then uh, remain dispersed in the fused salt. That is the reason this method you know though it is one of the initial methods found to get the uh, metallic potassium it is not followed commercially because of uh, this reason. Okay? So, then how do you produce metallic uh, potassium? Metallic uh, potassium is prepared from uh, potassium chloride by double decomposition with sodium. How? Sodium plus KCl reversibly reacts to give potassium plus sodium chloride. Okay, this is a reversible reaction. This is this is one of the important methods that people follow. This potassium is used in the high temperature heat transfer alloy. This this sodium potassium or NaK is a uh, very good high temperature heat transfer alloy. Right. So in the production of this, usually this metallic sodium is used, and then it is also used for the production of KO2. This KO2 is used in life support systems and then it is very reactive. So, then it is stored under unreactive gas such as nitrogen. Okay? Potassium chloride, whatever the uh, potassium chloride is produced out of which 90 percent is produced as fertilizer grade. Fertilizer grade having anything from 50 to 97 percent purity etc. So, some fertilizers required only 50 percent, 50, 51 percent KCl is sufficient. So, but however, fertilizer grade is having a KCl 97 purity. Okay? So, whatever the KCl is produced, 90 percent of KCl is produced under fertilizer grade. But however, if you wanted to produce uh, other uh, uh, potassium derived other potassium derivative then you have to go for a chemical grade uh, uh, potassium chloride that is 99.9 percent .9 pure. In fertilizer industries this KCl is also known as the muriate of potash. Chemical grade or 99.9 .9 percent KCl, 99.9 .9 percent pure KCl is often used for the manufacturing of most other potassium salts. We will be seeing some of them in the next class as well. So, what is potash? Potash is a general name given to a group of minerals and chemicals containing potassium. Right? So, uh, it is a general name. Potash is not only just KCl, but in, in general, though in fertilizer industries it is uh, called as muriate of potash. Potash is a uh, common name, very common name given to a group of minerals and chemicals that are containing potassium. Okay? And it is very important and basic uh, nutrient requirement for the growth of plants 
and then obviously it is a very important ingredient in the fertilizer industries. Okay. In general most of the potash is produced as potassium chloride however, because as we have seen you know it is primarily produced for the fertilizers purpose, so then it is produced in a you know KCL form. Now we see manufacture by trona process, manufacturing by trona process in the sense actually whatever the saline brine solution is there that is, uh, that is processed through several steps to get several products. Right? So, whatever the uh, saline solution or the brand solution that we take and then do the processing to get different products like uh, uh, potash, borax, soda, soda ash etc. these kind of components that process is known as the trona process. How it is done? So, it is you know solution is taken from the lakes for example, from CLS lake which is in California shipping of potash along with the other uh, numerous other uh, uh, potassium derived products was begun in 1916. This lake is composed of 4 layers, the upper layer of crystalline salt is 20 to 30 meters deep, second layer is about 4 to 5 meters of mud and then third layer is about 8 meter of salt and fourth layer is mud interspersed with minor salt seams. So, uh, brine whatever you required for the processing to go to follow the strona process to get different products you know that has to be collected from these lakes and in, in general what they do they take uh, something between you know uh, from the first and third layers. Okay? So, in processing brine is pumped from the interstices in the salt body from first and third layers. So, now we understand the brine is one of the important uh, component or basic raw material from which we are uh, producing all this soda, soda ash, borax etc. Right? So, it is important to see what is the composition or approximate composition of brines in the lower and upper uh, layers of the lake. So, if you see upper deposit percentages and lower deposit percentages, it is expressed as uh, composition of different uh, uh, chemicals like uh, potassium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium sulphate, sodium carbonate, borax or borates of sodium, sodium phosphate, sodium bromate and then other miscellaneous. You can see uh, there is no trend which is having higher component etc. It is like all kind of mixed trend. So, when you see the summation of these uh, salts then you say approximately 35 percent whether it is lower deposits or upper deposit at approximately 35 percent is uh, consisting of these salts and then remaining 65 percent approximately 65 percent remaining is nothing but the water H2O. So, now we see the trona processor what it is actually in this trona processor what we do we get a, uh, you know three major products. Uh, rather three major products we should say that a group of three major uh, uh, you know categories one is the uh, soda category another one is the potash category another one is the borax category okay so that processor we are going to see in detail now this processor gives more details of division of processes leading to products such as potassium chloride borax or hydrated borate of sodium uh, which is having this composition soda ash or soda crystals or sodium carbonate which is Na2CO3. Right? So, in this process large tonnage of common salt is also produced, but uh, this salt is not having enough market because of that one what we do in often it is washed back into the lake. Okay? So, this procedure is found upon many years of intensive research wherein exact conditions were worked out and then applied in the plant. Okay? So, we are going to see flow sheet of this process anyway. Now, before going to the flow chart, we will have a outline of trona procedure. Right? So, here, so this is the outline. Now, what you see? It looks very difficult to understand here. So, what I will do? I will try to uh, divide uh, this one into two parts. Right? So, this one part and then this is the other part. So, that is basically this entire uh, outline whatever is there it is very difficult to read here. So, the upper part I am taking to the next slide and discussing and then lower lower part I will be taking to further next slide and then discussing it. Okay? So, upper part 
is nothing but we start with the raw leg brain plus borax mother liquors also because in this process what happens you know actually primarily whatever the brain uh, is there that you concentrate and then in three different stages you get three different products one is the soda level another one is the potash level and then the last level is the uh, borax level right after the borax uh, uh, production uh, uh, crystallization whatever is remaining mother liquor is there that mother liquor is also fed back to the uh, initial brain uh, solution containing vessel right okay so these two are taken and then warmed by condensing vapors in vacuum crystallizers and then followed by it is concentrated in uh, triple effect evaporators by evaporating the water okay so then what happened you get the two main streams one is rich in uh, potassium chloride and then borax or borates of sodium another one is the remaining salts like uh, this one burkite this is known as this is one of the mineral which is known as the burkite and then this is halite and then this this is di uh, lithium sodium phosphate which is impurity of course from here also we get product so but these both the streams are hot in conditions so what we do first we take this kcl and then uh, borate of sodium uh, thing and then what you do you do vacuum crystallization at 38 degrees centigrade when you take this part and do the vacuum crystallization then what happens kcl will be centrifuged and then that can be dried and shipped so whatever the mother liquor uh, after uh, um, you know kcl being centrifuged to that uh, remaining mother liquor whatever is there that would be rich in borax that would be rich in borax of course there may be some kcl minor uh, minute kcl may also be there never worry about that one so this mother liquor that can be filtered again that can be filtered again to get the crude borax whereas the filtrate is there that can be sent back to the mother liquor which is being cooled to 24 degrees centigrade so this process can be continued until until the filtrate is not having any borax okay so this crude borax can be taken as it is for the product or it can be refined and then uh, you know refined borax can be taken as a product yes, right so now kcl is one product that you got refined borax is the second product now the other side the other stream which is having the burkite halite and then uh, impurities lithium impurities that is taken and separated by counter current washing we using the steam hot steam counter current washing is done so that whatever the uh, halite is there that can be taken as underflow sodium chloride solution and washed away overflow whatever is there that will be you know washed with lake uh, brine again and then a recovered brine is taken as you know collected and sent back to the initial position so this overflow after filtering with brine whatever is there uh, solution that you get that is having a dissolved burkite solution that is burkite dissolved in water that solution you get plus this whatever uh, dilithium sodium phosphate is there that will be floating on the surface of the liquid on the surface of burkite solution as they are, these are uh, you know floating so these floating impurities are taken and then impure uh, these things are hot list to get products from here also. So after removing or taking off the floating uh, impurities, you have only burkite liquor solution that you cool it to 22 degrees centigrade and do the filtration. One phase you get sodium sulphate, hydrated sodium sulphate, another one is the liquor which you can heat and then uh, treat it with uh, sodium chloride. So here after this step what you get you get you know a burkite solution is there that can be taken back to the initial position and then a filtrate whatever is there that is cooled to 30 degree centigrade and filtered again so there again you get some nacl that can be uh, sent back to the lakes further if you cooled it to 5 degree centigrade and do the filtration you will get the sodium carbonate or hydrated sodium carbonate crystals you get right so these crystals uh, you know you can do the calcination etc to get the uh, soda as sodium carbonate which is having 58 percent Na2O. So this is the third product okay. Whatever the uh, sodium sulphate 
hydrated sodium sulphate is there to that you can add NaCl to lower the transition to lower temperature of 17 degree centigrade and do the filtration. So, then you get the uh, refined Na2SO4 that you can dry and then send it to the products, products bagging and this is your fourth product. Whatever the sodium chloride mother liquor is there that is sent to the lake again. Now, the impurities whatever uh, dilithium sodium phosphate impurities are there that you uh, do the uh, you know uh, leaching with the hot water. So, then what you get? You get a burkite liquor that you can take to the initial feeding recycling purpose and then you get uh, impurities concentrated impurities which is having 20 percent lithium oxide you get that you can dry, you can dry and then take it as a product this may be a one product or what you can do this product you do the acidification reaction using the sulfuric acid to get the phosphoric acid and lithium sulphate 6, 7. This lithium sulphate if you treat further with sodium carbonate you will get lithium carbonate after centrifugation and drying of the centrifuged product like this. So, this is eighth product. So, now you can so many you can see so many products are there as per the requirement you know you can get the products. Actually these products are grouped in three categories one is the uh, soda category, another one is the potash category, another one is the borax category. So, now next flow sheet whatever we are going to see that is having all these uh, steps right. So, we discussed th the same details through flow sheet as well. However, in broadest outline if you wanted to present this uh, Trona procedure then it involves concentration of potassium chloride and borax in hot brine and then simultaneous separation of salt and uh, borkite which is a mineral that is having the composition Na2CO3 to Na2SO4 and then delayed crystallization of borax will lead to KCl that can be obtained by rapid cooling of concentrated brine in vacuum coolers and crystallizers. And then after centrifugation potash mother liquor is refrigerated and furnishes borax. All these steps we are going to see uh, by a flow chart where we can discuss in detail. Now, this is the flow chart actually this is having three sections first section is the concentration and then soda products, second section is the uh, potash recovery, third section is the borax recovery or third category this is. So, this we are going to see we take one by one ok. So, whatever the hot brine is there that is fed to the uh, lower bottom of a third effect evaporator of a triple effect evaporator. So, 1, 2, 3 triple effect evaporators, 3 evaporators are there. So, this hot brine is fed through a uh, by using a steam so that it can be uh, under uh, sufficiently hot condition when it goes into the uh, evaporator because this evaporator is being provided with the steam. So, now because of the hot steam what happens uh, you know uh, you know the solution would be get uh, heated up and then uh, volatile components would be taken uh, to a hydrocyclone to recover if any particles are there in the volatile components and then fed back to the uh, evaporator. Whereas, the volatiles mostly water which is not having any uh, uh, you know sediments or solid particles etcetera they will be condensed and collected as solution. The same thing happening in all three of uh, these evaporators right. So, this is in triple effect evaporator basically we are concentrating the brine solution. So, whatever the underflow that you get from the uh, uh, each of these cones each of these effects are taken to the corresponding cones 1, 2, 3. The underflow of a cone is taken to the uh, second cone like that subsequently to the third cone it is been done right. So, from the bottom uh, or the third cone bottom what you get you get the salts, you get the salts which is having some solutions also. So, then what you do? You do the vacuum filtration so that to remove the you know uh, liquor etcetera right. So, and then solids whatever are there that you collect these solids are nothing but they are rich in soda products. So, this solids you take to soda products plant ok. Whereas, the after vacuum filtration uh, brine solution etcetera is there that is uh, nothing but uh, mother liquor 2 which is taken to the hot brine container again. 
whereas the overflow of these three cones whatever is there that is taken to a clarifier right this overflow is rich in potash content so this overflow uh, of these cones are taken to a clarifier there you know uh, further uh, purification of uh, or you know concentration of this uh, uh, overflow will take place right and then that is taken to a concentrated storage here for the recovery of potash because this uh, overflow of this clarifier whatever is there you know uh, rich in potash products so that is taken to concentrated storage here and then this concentrated solution whatever is there so that undergoes three stage vacuum centrifugation so that to concentrate it or remove the liquors etc right after the third vacuum crystallizer whatever the underflow is there that is taken to a settler where uh, solids or you know crystals of uh, potash are being separated out and dried and then sent to the bagging section whereas the liquor which is coming as the overflow of this settler is nothing but the mother liquor one which is rich in which is rich in borax so this mother liquor is taken to mother liquor tank where mother liquor 1 and 3 both are there this mother liquor now it is rich in borax right this is undergoing some kind of steps like refrigeration crystallization followed by thickening etc and then when you do the filtration you get the filtrate whatever is there that is nothing but mother liquor too so further you take it to the uh, um, you know after the filtration uh, whatever the solids that you get they are nothing but the crude borax and then further refining of this crude borax if you do you get the refined borax and then in the process of uh, crude borax refining uh, whatever the mother liquor is remaining that is mother liquor 3 that is taken to the uh, this tank until this is not having any borax component so this is this is the overall uh, trona procedure in a flow chart manner okay so getting the soda products getting the potash products and then getting borax products okay now we see step by step uh, their description as well concentration and soda product separation raw brine is mixed with uh, end liquors from borax crystallizing house and pumped into third effect of uh, triple effect evaporators where brine is hot concentrated and salted out in three effects counter to the steam flow suspended salts whatever are there they are nothing but NaCl and then burkite mineral are removed from the liquors of each effect by continuously circulating the hot liquor through cone settlers which are also known as the salt separators or salt traps whatever the three cones uh, we have seen here these are nothing but the salt separators or you know salt trap underflow from first effect cone containing salt passes through an orifice into the second effect second effect cone receiving a counter current wash with the clarified liquor from the second effect cone combined salts of first second and third cones receive a hot counter current wash with raw brine as they leave third cone combined underflow is filtered and then filtrate returned to the evaporators as we have seen in the flow chart cake whatever is there that is having salt NaCl and then mineral Na2CO3 to Na2SO4 which is nothing but burkite is sent to the soda products to recover Na2CO3 soda products plant in that we recover Na2CO3 from this cake final hot concentrated liquor is withdrawn from overflow of first effect cone into an axillary settler called clarifier okay overflow from this clarifier is pumped to storage at the potash plant because this is this overflow is very rich in potash component okay so underflow from clarifier is filtered and treated in the same manner as the previous underflows we have seen so whatever the overflow coming from the 
clarifier is nothing but uh, you know mother liquor which is rich in uh, uh, potash component. So, that part we see now here. So, this concentrated storage undergo three stage vacuum centrifugation followed by settling followed by drying of the crystals of uh, potash etcetera. This already we have discussed. Description we see hot concentrated liquor leaving the clarifiers is saturated with KCl and borax. KCl is obtained by cooling quickly to 38 degree centigrade and crystallizing in three stage vacuum cooler crystallizers. Enough water is added to replace that evaporated so that NaCl remains in the solution. Suspense of solid KCl in the mother liquor is passed to a cone settler where the thickened sludge is obtained as underflow. KCl is dried in rotary dryers yielding 97 percent KCl that is fertilizer grade potash. The salt is conveyed to storage to bagging plant or to a recrystallizing procedure as per the requirement. Third stage is separation of borax. So, whatever the overflow of uh, this component is there actually rich in potash with some borax also. So, here that is taken here and then we have done this uh, three stage vacuum uh, crystallization to get the potash here. So, the remaining liquor whatever is there that is now having only borax, rich in borax. This is uh, gone through this stage to get the crude borax or refined borax as per the requirement. Okay. So, now this part also we have seen now description of the same we see now. Overflow combined with filtrate is pumped to borax plant for removal of borax. Potash mother liquor is cooled in vacuum crystallizers as shown in the flow chart. Water lost by evaporator is returned to boiling solution to prevent concentration of this solution with consequent crystallization of KCL with crude borax. Borax crystallizes out a crude sodium tetraborate pentahydrate. This crude borax is filtered off and washed. Filtrate is returned to the start of evaporator cycle along with the brine solution. When necessary crude borax is refined by recrystallization. Otherwise this salt is centrifuged, dried and packaged for the market. So, that is the trona procedure. Now, the same trona procedure we see in a different manner rather than flow sheet uh, we see in a different pictorial manner. So, lake brine whatever is there that is having composition like this. There may be other things also water, NaCl, dilithium sodium phosphate, sodium carbonate, sodium sulphate, uh, potassium chloride, uh, sodium borate etcetera all these things are borax etcetera all these things are there. They are there in a mineral form they may not be there in the pure form. So, this lake brine what you do? You do the concentration of this one. How, how you do? By using triple effect evaporator. So, when you use the triple effect evaporator to concentrate this lake brine solution, you can uh, take off the evaporated water and then con concentrated solids whatever is there or you know slurry whatever is there that is you know taken to the uh, soda products plant and then liquor whatever is there which is the concentrated liquor that is taken to the potash plant because this liquor is rich in both potash and borax. Okay. These soda products are uh, further processed to get you know sodium sulphate, sodium carbonate, lithium carbonate, phosphoric acid etc. Okay. Now, this concentrated liquor which is rich in potash and then borax is taken to the uh, potash plant. right? So, mother liquor of this potash plant is taken to the borax plant whereas the solids that you get here from the potash plant are further processed to get agricultural grade potassium chloride, granular potassium chloride, chemical potassium chloride as per the requirement and then liquid bromine also plus potassium sulphate also if you need to get the mixed uh, fertilizers etc. Right? So, mother liquor of uh, this potash plant whatever is there that is nothing but mother liquor number 1 which is sent to the borax plant here. So, here now this mother liquor is primarily rich in borax. So, the borax is taken to the borax refinery and then mother liquor of this plant whatever is there that is nothing but mother liquor number 2 which is sent back to the 
uh, concentration process along with the lake brine. This uh, borax is sent to the borax refinery where you can get different types of uh, borax components. Okay? This is all about the trona process or procedure. We have been discussing in different forms the same thing now. Now major engineering problems if you wanted to list out the first most important issue is the proper design of a triple effective operator because everything is happening from the concentrated uh, product that you get uh, after uh, evaporating water from the brain and that you are doing in the evaporators, triple effective operators. So, evaporation is at the rate of several million kgs of water per day is taking place. So, then triple effect evaporators whatever you have taken that is going to be very essential, very important point. Now, in this process obviously you are supplying the uh, energy to evaporate the or boil off the water from the evaporator. So, then heat transfer is involved and then this heat transfer is very much essential because when salt crystallizes out at the same time along with this uh, you know water being evaporated both of them are taking place at the same time. So, effective heat transfer is very much uh, essential, proper heat transfer calculation one has to do. So, this problem solved by removing the piping from inside the evaporators and doing the heating in outside heaters under mild hydrostatic pressure with minimum evaporation. Superheated solution is flashed into evaporators also and then heat transfer is also facilitated by vacuum cooling through vaporization instead of using cooling liquids in coils which could become fouled with encrusted solids in general. Okay? So, vacuum cooling is again another option right? because of considering all these things cost of energy increased actually when you do the careful, careful analysis to incorporate all these things the cost of energy is very much high. However, you know later on several studies uh, uh, have been carried out and then reduction of energy use has been found, but those details are not yet been disclosed. Okay? So, this is all about the trona process or trona procedure along with its engineering problems etc. Right? So, the references for this lecture are provided here. So, details of these uh, uh, slides whatever we discussed in this present lecture can be found from these two books. Thank you. Thank you.